Action Man, Alistair Wolverine. Fighters embody danger and explosiveness with punches that rival the impact of cannonballs. But he is the one who stands out as the Demolition Man. From the electrifying rings of K-1 to the intense octagons of the UFC, Overeem's journey is more than just about fights. It's a saga of resilience, power, and the relentless pursuit of greatness. But what's the story behind this colossal figure? How did a boy from the Netherlands become a global fighting icon? Alistair Overeem was born to a Jamaican father and a Dutch mother on May 17, 1980 in Hunslow, England. He was six when his parents divorced. Overeem, along with his mother and older brother, moved to the Netherlands. This tough situation transformed the young cheerful boy into a gloomy kid. Growing up with his brother made his life a lot more comfortable. Alistair dedicated his time to learning from his big bro. Of course, he soon saw himself standing up against some regular bullies who gave up on disturbing his affairs. His journey into martial arts began at this point, not out of passion at first, but as a means to stand up against bullies. He started training with his brother Valentin in various sports, including judo, track and field, and basketball. Overeem was athletic and energetic as a child, showing an early interest in sports. But what was the spark that ignited his passion for fighting? Influenced by his older brother Valentin, he started practicing at 15, followed by basketball and track and field. However, it was the world of martial arts that truly captivated him. Initially, the sport did not appeal to him as he was routinely beaten by more experienced students. Yet, his interest shifted dramatically after meeting influential figures like Bas Rutan and Joop Castille. Inspired by their skill and dedication, Overeem was fully committed to his training. This marked the beginning of his journey to becoming a renowned fighter. The world of fighting is brutal and unforgiving. Overeem had to adapt quickly, learning not just to fight, but to strategize and overthink his opponents. He transitioned from judo to kickboxing and then to mixed martial arts. By 18, Alistair was a Dutch national kickboxing champion. His imposing physique and lightning-fast kicks turned heads. His professional debut in MMA came in 1999, a moment that marked the beginning of an extraordinary career. The clash was brutal and fast-paced. Fayette, a seasoned professional, swung heavy blows, but the newcomer was a blur of relentless energy. Dodging hooks and unleashing lightning-quick jabs, Overeem closed the distance, his eyes glinting with fierce determination. With a sudden surge of power, he grappled Fayette to the ground, maneuvering into a dominant position. The roar of the crowd was deafening as Overeem erupted in celebration. The 19-year-old furious sensation defeated Ricardo Fayette by submission on 24th October 1999. He was a new star born in the brutal ballet of the octagon. On that October night, a legend began. After a promising start with a 10-3 record, Overeem stepped into the Pride Fighting Championships on July 20th, 2002. Stepping into the ring, adrenaline pumping through his veins, he set his sights on Yusuke Imamura. The fight was spectacular. Overeem, a powerhouse of technique and aggression, unleashed a barrage of strikes. Imamura couldn't withstand the storm and appeared helpless. With a thunderous knee in just 44 seconds, Overeem sent Imamura crashing to the canvas, earning a lightning-fast knockout victory. Alistair Overeem was just 23 years old, a light heavyweight wielding a big wooden hammer before every fight as the Demolition Man. But even then, as a 16-3 prospect on the rise getting ready to face Chuck Liddell in Pride's 2003 205-pound Grand Prix, his philosophy on fighting is one he carries with him to the present day. Have you heard it before? To win a fight is awesome on its own, but to finish a fight before the official time limit by way of KO is indescribable. He said back then, I'm a true believer that a fight can be decided by one punch, one kick, or one knee. You just have to be patient, wait for that right moment, and of course have the abilities to do so. Isn't it mind-boggling? Pride proved to be a roller coaster of emotions for Overeem. He notched two more impressive wins. 
showcasing his devastating striking and ground game. But then came a brutal clash with Chuck Liddell, a bitter defeat that tested his resolve. Yet like a true champion, Overeem roared back. Overeem defeated Tomohiko Hashimoto at Inoki Bombaya 2003. It took only 36 seconds. Overeem's road to success was not that easy. He faced numerous setbacks and injuries, each a test of his resolve and dedication. But what set Overeem apart was his ability to adapt and evolve, turning each setback into a stepping stone towards greatness. After losing to Liddell in 2003, Overeem bounced back with two wins outside of Pride. He returned to the league in 2004, defeating Horomitsu Kanehara by TKO. However, he lost to Antonio Rogero Noguera four months later, making his pride record 3-2. This set the stage for a fight against Vitor Belfort, who had just finished a series of fights in the UFC. Despite the high stakes, Overeem kept his cool. He displayed strong striking and defense. After hitting Belfort with a knee, he launched a flurry of strikes on the ground, locked in a guillotine choke, and made the Phenom submit. His victory over Belfort displayed his evolving skill set and strategic fighting. He then secured a quick submission victory over Igor Vokjanchin in the quarterfinals. This win demonstrated his versatility and lethal submission techniques. However, his journey ended in the semifinals with a loss to Mauricio Rua. 2006 brought new challenges. Overeem won against Sergei Karatonov, dislocating Karatonov's shoulder. This fight depicted his raw power and aggressive fighting style. The victory led him to the Pride 2006 Openweight Grand Prix, where he faced Fabricio Verdum but lost in the second round. Facing Verdum, he showcased his resilience and determination in the fiercely competitive Grand Prix. Even with victories over skilled fighters like Belfort, Overeem's three straight losses in pride to Noguera, Arona, and Rua depicted that he needed to move up to heavyweights to stand out in MMA. In 2007, he committed himself fully to the heavyweight division and won his first Strike Force heavyweight title by beating Paul Buentello in November. After not fighting in the U.S. for over two years, he returned to face Brett Rogers in St. Louis. With high expectations, Overeem quickly defeated Rogers, who had previously put up a good fight against Fedor Emelianenko. It took Overeem only 3 minutes 40 seconds to send the grim packing, leading many to wonder how he would perform in the UFC. His 2007 K1 World Grand Prix Championship victory solidified his status as a striking powerhouse, earning him the nickname The Demolition Man. This title win also marked him as one of the elite strikers in the world, further enhancing his formidable reputation. His journey through these battles reflected his relentless pursuit of greatness and adaptation to any challenge thrown his way. Nearly two decades later, Overeem moved to the heavyweight division, won the Strike Force and Dream heavyweight titles in MMA, and the 2010 K1 World Grand Prix in kickboxing. On February 6th, he will step into the UFC octagon for the 20th time, continuing his quest for championship gold against Alexander Volkov. Let's have a glimpse of it. In 2010, Overeem's career reached new heights when he won the K-1 World Grand Prix, becoming the first fighter to hold world titles in both MMA and K-1 kickboxing simultaneously. This historic win made him a legend in the world of combat sports. This achievement was a testament to his versatility and skill as a fighter. He dominated the tournament, showcasing his striking power and tactical brilliance. Overeem did not stop here. The sky was the limit for him. His victory over Peter Ertz in the finals was particularly impressive as he won by TKO in the first round. This win was not just about the title, it was about proving he could excel in multiple disciplines of fighting. Overeem's relentless training, strategic mind, and physical fitness were the keys to his success. His achievement echoed around the world, inspiring fighters and fans alike. Overeem continued to push the boundaries of what was possible in his career, always aiming higher and never settling for less. His journey was a clear message. With determination and skill, one can reach any summit. 
You might think winning 3K1 fights in one night would mean a break for Overeem, but no, he went on to fight Todd Duffy on New Year's Eve for the Dream Heavyweight title. Earlier, he shared his busy schedule. He rested for a week after the final 16 in October. He toured Japan for the media, trained in Thailand for two weeks, then fought and won the K1 finals. After all the media attention, he fought for the Dream title on December 31st, 2010. He was away for six weeks, returning with two titles, four wins, and lots of experience. And yeah, he won that fight with Duffy, needing only 19 seconds. Overeem aspired to make his most significant mark in the UFC. He entered the UFC with high expectations and quickly established himself as a force to be reckoned with. The expectations were high. He was fighting against former heavyweight champ Brock Lesnar. It was not just from the fans, but from the man himself. This is the biggest fight ever, and I can only be excited, he said. Brock is a dream match. I think the fans will agree with that. I never thought the fight would be possible because I was outside of the UFC. And now that I'm in the UFC, I'm just so excited. Overeem didn't stick around long, though, as he halted the most respected and feared fighters in the heavyweight division. His legacy in the UFC is not just about the fights he won, but the indomitable spirit he brought to every match. His nickname, The Demolition Man, was a fitting tribute to his fighting style, a blend of precision, power, and technical mastery. He fought in numerous organizations, including Pride, Strike Force, Dream, and K1, facing some of the best fighters in the world. But what was it like for him to fight on such grand stages? Overeem excelled under immense pressure, captivating audiences worldwide with his spectacular performances. His mixed martial arts record is proof of his mastery and ultimate power, 67 fights out of which he emerged victorious in 47. Each victory is a story of determination and skill. Imagine the intensity in those 25 wins by knockout. Each punch and kick depicted his raw power. And then there are the 17 wins by submission, showcasing his technical intelligence and strategic mind. But every hero's journey has its challenges. Overeem faced 19 losses, with 15 by knockout. These moments were not just setbacks, these were the lessons that molded him into the fighter he is today. Each loss was a reminder of the sport's unpredictability and the need for constant evolution. Curious about his kickboxing stats? Overeem has been equally impressive there. Out of 15 fights, he claimed victory in 10, with 7 of these wins coming by way of knockout. His power wasn't just confined to MMA, it echoed in the kickboxing ring too. However, he also faced defeats, 4 losses, 3 by knockout, and 1 without contest. These numbers speak volumes of his resilience and ability to compete at the highest levels across different combat sports. Before we continue, a quick pause. If you're gripped by the journey of this legendary fighter, smash that like button and hit subscribe for more stories from the world of combat sports. And hey, why not share this video with a friend who's just as captivated by the stories of these incredible athletes? Let's continue with the electrifying saga of Alistair the Demolition Man Overeem. Overeem's journey to the big stages of MMA and kickboxing was a blend of relentless training, strategic fights, and a strong belief in his abilities. His ability to adapt and evolve with the sport kept him at the top of his game for years. From his striking accuracy to his grappling skills, Overeem was a fighter who could adapt to any opponent, making him a formidable force in any ring or octagon. He transitioned from a brutal attacker to a calculated fighter, learning to use his reach and skill set. In the UFC, his time was marked by several noticeable victories and some setbacks, including a failed drug test in 2012. Despite these challenges, he remained a constant threat in the heavyweight division. Overeem's influence extended beyond his victories. He showcased the effectiveness of Dutch kickboxing techniques in MMA, inspiring future generations of fighters. His entertaining fighting style and larger-than-life personality brought new fans to the sport, contributing to the rise of MMA's global popularity. What about his upcoming fights? 
Originally scheduled to meet in 2012, the fight with JDS instead wound up taking place in late 2015. Overeem had a mixed time leading up to it, balancing wins and losses after defeating Lesnar. However, a second round TKO against Dos Santos put him back in the game, leading to a fight with heavyweight champion Stipe Miocic. Unfortunately, Overeem lost to Miocic, but he didn't stay down for long. Six months later, he defeated Mark Hunt with third round knees, showing he was still in the game. Following a challenging period with losses to Francis Ngannou and Curtis Blades in 2017 and 18, Overeem's career seemed uncertain. However, his relocation to Colorado to train with the Elevation Fight Team and his former opponent Blades refreshed his career. He demonstrated his continued relevance in the heavyweight division by defeating the undefeated Sergei Pavlovich in China, taking less than a round to claim victory. This win marked his 45th victory in MMA, emphasizing his lasting prowess. Facing adversity against Walt Harris in Florida, Overeem was initially in trouble getting hit hard early on. Yet with the resilience of a seasoned fighter, he regained control and secured a win with a second round stoppage, marking another comeback in his storied career. This win not only added to his impressive record, but also highlighted Overeem's ability to overcome challenges and remain a formidable competitor in the heavyweight division. What was next? End of career or another fight? He returned to kickboxing in 2021 and signaled a multi-fight contract with Glory. Overeem, who had been experimenting with kickboxing since 1999, started focusing more on it towards the end of the decade. His first big match in this sport was against the well-known Badr Hari. This fight was a significant win for him. Overeem quickly knocked Hari out with a fast left knee and a quick left hook. Hari got up again, but the demolition man took him down for good with another left hook. He won unanimously, which showed his enduring passion and versatility as a fighter. This victory also showed that Overeem was not only a threat in MMA, but also a rising star in kickboxing. Alistair Overeem has a loyal fan base. Overeem's fighting style, charisma, and sportsmanship have endeared him to a loyal fan base that enthusiastically supports him in each of his endeavors inside the cage. He has fought in multiple countries around the world. From Japan to the United States, the Furious Giant has showcased his skills in front of audiences worldwide, earning him fans from all walks of life. Overeem's legacy is about more than just wins and losses. It's a story of perseverance, evolution, and the relentless pursuit of greatness. Overeem may not have conquered UFC gold, but he conquered the hearts of fight fans worldwide. His journey reminds us that true success is not just about reaching the top. It's about the resilience, determination, and spirit we show along the way. The Demolition Man is and will always be remembered as a symbol of strength and perseverance. Until next time.